Ek Mulakat is being initiated by Prabha Ketan Foundation in collaboration with Jeshi Periwal Foundation, which brings prominent personalities to interact with some selective guests of Jaipur. Ek Mulakat provides us the rare opportunity to gain an insight into the creative and passionate minds of those who are harbingers of change in their respective fields. To deliver the welcome note, I would now like to invite Mr. Shekhar Savant, GM of ITC Rajputana. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all our friends and well-wishers gathered here this evening for yet another edition of Ek Mulakat, which is an initiative of the Prabha Khetan Foundation to promote cultural activities in our country. It is also my privilege this evening to welcome the very versatile and accomplished Ambassador of Poland to India, His Excellency Mr. Adam Burakowski. May I request a hand? <laughs> India's uh, relations with Poland have grown stronger over the past years, and one, uh, in fact, they go back quite a long way. And one good example is the fact that there is a university in Krakow. I'll try to pronounce it. It's called the Jag Ilonian University. <laughs> and has been teaching Sanskrit, Hindi, and Indian cultural subjects since 1894. Oh, wow. His Excellency uh, himself is a graduate of the Maharaja Jam Sahib Digvijay Singh Ji High School in Warsaw. Yes. Uh, some of us might be aware that uh, his, uh, the Maharaja Jam Sahib had provided sanctuary uh, to displace uh, Polish nationals during World War II. Your Excellency, I understand that you are a historian and a political scientist. And uh, you've been involved in journalist and you've also uh, had um, uh, opportunity, opportunity to, uh, to witness firsthand uh, uh, events between India and, and Europe and, like, and, and vice versa. Well, my, uh, my own introduction to your country began in the my own introduction to your country began in the early 1980s when I first read in the pages of the Time magazine about a feisty trade union leader called Lech Walesa in the port city of Gdansk, okay, wow. heading what was then known as the Solidarnosc, a solidarity union. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I'm, I mean, standing up for what in those impossible times were uh, uh, dock workers' rights, of all things. Yes. Yeah. Um, the other important uh, I, uh, historical figure was someone that I studied in school in history, and this was King John Sobieski III. Right? And he himself was, was quite a contributor to modern Europe as we know it today. So Poland did, after all, contribute a lot to the culture of modern Europe as we know it in today's times. ITC Hotels has always embraced the values and importance of art and culture. Uh, and we do this through our Welcome Art and Welcome Theatre initiatives, which provide artists, playwrights, and actors a platform to showcase their talents before a wider community. And finally, I would like to conclude and express my gratitude again to the members of the Prabhakaya Foundation for providing a wonderful platform which leads to such better understanding of cross-country cultures. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Mr. Savant. We are indeed honored to have with us today Mr. Adam Burakowski. Mr. Burakowski, we tame a Jaipur. In conversation with Mr. Burakowski today, we have Dr. Mini Nanda, who has taught English for three decades in the Department of English, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. In the course of her career, she was the head and member, University Senate, and has supervised many scholars at both MPhil and doctoral levels in diverse areas of English literature. Her pursuit of women's writings had made her initiate various academic activities as the director, Center for Women's Studies. Her academic writings span cultural studies, film studies, women's writings, Indian, South Asian, Canadian, Caribbean, and Latin American literatures. We really look forward to the enriching conversation. Before we begin, may I request you all to please switch off or put your phones on silent mode. Over to you, Dr. Nanda. So, namaskar and welcome to this session. Welcome, Ambassador Adam Burakowski. Is ek mulakat mein aapka hardik swagat hai. 
Megit te rávsz ebbe, hogy Daniel vett. Thank you very much. India for you, I believe, is much more than a diplomatic mission. You are drawn to Hindi literature and Hindi language. So please tell us what drew you to Hindi language in the first place. First of all, I would like to uh, thank you all for coming and uh, thank you the uh, organizers, um, the uh, Prabhakatan Foundation and the Ek Mulakat team and uh, also ITC Rajputana uh, Hotel. And uh, I can, yes, I can tell Love you that. For literature and Hindi yes, language. yes. Uh, my story with uh, India began in uh, 1997. Uh, I was uh, 20 years old and I first came to India as a tourist. I visited Jaipur as well at that time. Um, this city is uh, exceptional, exceptional, absolutely. Ce sari d'unia se ek sap se khubsurat shi sheher. Hindi sahit kriye bhi bhaut mahatva purun ha ye sheher. Because you've mentioned Nirmal Varma ji, Radha reporter, mm -hmm. and on the other hand, there is this fascination for crime fiction, Surendra Mohan. <laughs> yes. So he was here a couple of uh, mm -hmm. some years back in this very venue. Surendra oh. Mohan Pathak was here. I would love to meet him yes. <laughs> Some, someday. So uh, I came as a tourist in um, in 1997. Um, it was a time when. Poland and also India was going through a very turbulent economic transformation. Yeah. I was uh, very young at that time uh, and uh, it was a very important experience that shaped my life uh, for next uh, decades. And then I started uh, learning Hindi uh, and uh, reading about India, researching uh, India, um, listening to music uh, and uh, watching films and uh, reading, yes, uh, reading uh, books. And uh, then I be began my academic career and uh, India has always been one of my topics of, uh, of uh, of the academic career, not the only one, because the second one is Central Eastern Europe, which is uh, my home you know, place. So also when you talk about uh, Hindi literature, we can move to Urdu literature also. Uh, Manto, a hundred years after his birth, is still remembered as one of the most powerful voices in Urdu literature and language for his uh, portrayal, sensitive portrayal of the marginalized and the nuanced study of the complexity of human nature and his stories on partition. Mm -hmm. And you have translated Manto into the Polish language. Tell us about this <laughs> translation of Manto. Did you do it from the original Urdu or was it from English? Uh, it was from original Urdu version. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> but it has not been published yet, so... No, there's <laughs> always scope for publication. Uh, yes, and this is one of the projects that uh, I, I'm keeping for the rest of my life. This is to uh, publish uh, uh, a collection of uh, Manto short stories uh, in Polish language. That's very interesting because Manto also began his literary career as a translator. Mm -hmm. Manto translated English, uh, Russian and French stories. So, and when you talk about translation and it is a work in progress, so that is how a, re a writer we feel is reincarnated in another culture and language. So thank you for this abiding interest in uh, Manto. I, I, I can tell you that uh, Mm, uh, like half a year ago, I saw this film, Manto. There's a very, very, very good film, really. Um, 
not only because of the character, but also of um, how how the film is made. It's it's really um, a masterpiece, I think, of cinematography. This uh, this film. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I uh, translated. Uh, how many, so, stories? Yeah. How many stories? How many stories have you? I don't done? count them, but uh, one of my favorite is Kali Shelvara. Kali, Kali Shelvara. Kali Shelvara. This is uh, one of my favorite mantra, st mantra stories. And uh, also, uh, uh, Volarki. Volarki. This is, I think this is my favorite. All right. Mm -hmm. And of course, the iconic Toba Teksing. Uh, actually, this one I don't like. Okay. <laughs> That's so honest. <laughs> so, you, uh, Ambassador Burakowski, are a political scientist and a historian with a specialization, as you just said, on India. One of the specialization mm -hmm. is on India. And you've written a book on Indian history, commencing from the first war of independence in 1857, which comes up to the present. Would you like to tell us about the genesis of this book? Uh, this is the outcome of my research uh, for several years uh, of research. Um, what is uh, what facilitates uh, the research, especially the elder history, like this colonialism, is that uh, many sources are published on the internet that were very hard to access uh, before. The, the internet. So I, I, I wrote this book uh, with uh, uh, one of my friends, uh, Dr. Krzysztof Iwanek, who is uh, one of the best specialists uh, uh, on India in, in Poland. And uh, uh, we tried to, uh, to show not the, only the general history of India, but uh, also the uh, more regional aspects uh, of of it. So uh, this is uh, from the Great Uprising or the First War of Independence uh, till uh, 2013. Why why was that? Because we published this in 2013. So it has to stop at some <laughs> yes, point. Yes. Uh, so um, it was uh, before uh, the uh, current Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji came to power. So now, the ties between our two countries, India and Poland, was strengthened further in 1942, when Maharaja Dik Singh Ji of Navanagar, Gujarat, established a camp for refugee Polish children fleeing the Holocaust. And uh, this was a time when India was fighting its own battle, a non-violent battle for self-determination and independence and there was severe drought and famine in the land. And uh, Jam Sahib, as he was fondly called, Jam Sahib's endeavors and gesture rose as a testimony of what Altaf Ali's couplet says, Yahi hai ibadat, yahi deeno iman, ki kaam aay dunya mein insaan ke insaan. So that gesture, please share with us the Polish Parliament's resolution of 2016 and the details of the school. <laughs> so the, the story about uh, Polish refugees uh, and uh, Maharaja uh, Jamsaib Digvijay Singh Ji and also the uh, Maharaja of uh, Kolapur, because there were two. Mm -hmm, yes. Um, is, uh, maybe I, I'll... I explained from the very beginning. So, um, on the 1st of September 1939, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, and on 17th, uh, 17th uh, September same year, uh, Soviet Union also invaded Poland. So we were invaded both by uh, Germany and the Soviet Union, and both states were totalitarian at that time. And both states wanted to eradicate Polish nation from the earth. So Stalin and uh, his communists, uh, they were forcibly moving Polish people from Eastern Poland to Siberia. And uh, put, putting them in Gulag uh, concentration camps and uh, forced labor camps. 
many of them died, um, and uh, also many of them left. Uh, when they died, they left orphans, orphan children. Um, in 1941, uh, Nazi Germany attacked Soviet, Soviet Union, and then Stalin realized that the alliance uh, should change, and he left. He let these people go out of Soviet Union. So, a Polish government in exile uh, organized a big uh, escape from Soviet Union, um, mainly to Iran, and. Um, from uh, Iran, uh, also they created also the Polish uh, armed forces. And uh, for people who were not able to uh, carry weapons, um, and there should be some, uh, the Polish government in the exile uh, tried to uh, find some shelter. And uh, they found the shelters in many places, including uh, Mexico or New Zealand. but. The closest to Iran was uh, India, and uh, these people uh, went uh, through uh, Quetta, uh, Karachi, and then to uh, Bombay. Um, and uh, the Polish consulate in Bombay uh, was uh, the consul uh, Eugeniusz Banasiński and his wife Kira Banasińska. They were very active in finding some place for, for the uh, refuge. Uh, so, uh, they uh, spoke with uh, Maharaja of uh, Navanagar, because this was uh, uh, the name of Jamnagar at that time, and of Kolapur. And in, uh, in uh, Balachari, uh, near today's uh, Jamnagar, the Maharaja created a refugee camp for uh, Polish uh, children. Uh, and uh, around 1,000 uh, Polish children found uh, the place. In Kolapur, the camp was bigger, uh, but it was mainly for adult people. It was uh, for 5,000. Uh, in uh, common memory of, uh, of uh, Poles, uh, both Maharajas are uh, well known, but the Jamnagar uh, Maharaja is uh, more commemorated. Uh, maybe because it was about children, orphan children, and also these people who uh, were in that uh, in the camps, uh, they uh, cultivated these memories even during the communist uh, times. Um, last year we, uh, oh, maybe just uh, going back, uh, the Maharaja uh, Jamsaheb Digvijay Singh Ji uh, said that uh, he demands nothing uh, for, for, for his deeds. Uh, he just wants that, uh, he just wanted that uh, one street in Warsaw should be named after him. Uh, it was his wish. Uh, and uh, mm, in, during communist times it was impossible. Uh, but uh, then uh, one square in Warsaw was named after, uh, yes, this is this called uh, Good Maharaja Square because uh, this uh, very long name, Jamsaib uh, Digvijay Singh Ji, is very hard to pronounce uh, in Polish language. He was the Good Samaritan and yes. he told the children that I'm your father. You are <laughs> not often here. Yeah. Yeah. They called him Bapu. Yes. Um, and also, uh, a school that I graduated uh, was named after, after him. Yes. And uh, I'm uh, very proud that I'm a graduate of uh, the Maharaja uh, School. Uh, and um, in the uh, um, last uh, decades, uh, these uh, people who were in that uh, camps, uh, they keep coming, uh, both to Jamnagar and Kolapur, and making some uh, functions, some ceremonies to commemorate all these, uh, all these uh, deeds. Uh, there is a, a cemetery, a cemetery in um, Kolapur uh, for uh, people who, Polish people who died there, and also in Jamnagar there are two graves of uh, Polish uh, children. Uh, one of them died because of some disease that he had from Soviet, carried from Soviet Union, and second one um, from some accident. Um, and uh, last year we uh, made a, a function in, in Jamnagar. We brought this uh, 
uh, children of Maharaja uh, to, uh, to Jamnagar, to Balachari, and to commemorate all these, all these things. Thank you for this detailed history. <laughs> I can tell and, you also one, yeah. one story from last year oh. that one of, uh, of these uh, uh, people, uh, she, yeah. of, of this, uh, no, these people are like around 90. Oh. Uh, uh, she came um, to our um, function because her daughter read in Times of India that we are preparing some ceremony, uh, yes, commemoration, uh, and uh, she asked if she could also participate. Yes. She, uh, uh, she lived in uh, in United States, and uh, we of course agreed. She came, and uh, and uh, she was very moved by this whole ceremony. She uh, returned back to. United States, and uh, uh, just a week after she passed away. Oh my. Yes, and uh, uh, just uh, the day before she passed away, she was uh, singing the uh, song about Jai Jai Maharaja. Oh. So this is the kind of, you know, emotional mm -hmm. connect. And uh, the connection of homes continues. Mm -hmm. You reside in the house where once uh, Baba Sahibji lived. V. R. Ambedkar, as the first law minister of independent India, lived in the house where you reside. And we believe you're very, you savor Indian cuisine. And uh, you're also very magnanimous about our weather. You say you like it. <laughs> Your comments. So, Hamare Gar, Hamare Residence, Kebaraman, Sapsepele. The resident of the uh, ambassador of Poland was uh, built in 1920s by uh, Maharaja of uh, Kanika, uh, a s small state in nowadays uh, Orissa. Uh, then uh, in uh, 1947 uh, it was nationalized and was given to Dr. Ambedkar because he was a member of the government. So he wrote the constitution in our residence. We are very proud. Yes. <laughs> We are proud and honored uh, that uh, this happened uh, there. Because also there is another connection. Uh, Poland is the country, first European country to adopt a constitution. In 1791, the 3rd of May, uh, we adopted the first constitution in Europe and second in, in the world after the United States. So, and the uh, Constitution of India was written in uh, our residence. In 1951, uh, Dr. Ambedkar, uh, Baba Saab, he left the government. And uh, then in uh, 1954, uh, India established uh, diplomatic relations with Poland. And yes, and they gave this residence to Poland in exchange of also very, very nice residence, which is called India House. In, in, the, Poland. in Poland, in Warsaw, in cent central Warsaw. The India House is next to the British, uh, British Embassy in, in Warsaw. Well, as I said, the connection with homes continues. Yes. And uh, we also know that you're extremely fond of Hindi films <laughs> and music. Yes. So, which films? <laughs> and which films do you like to watch? Uh, I like to watch... Uh, all, all the films <laughs> from from India. Hindi also. film buff, totally. Yes. Uh, it's a film a day, I believe. One film a day you watch Hindi film. Uh, you used to watch. I used to watch. Yeah. Now I don't have too much time. You know, I, especially uh, I like the, uh, the decade of uh, of 1970s yeah. okay. when. Uh, uh, we observed the rise of the, uh, the biggest star, Amitabh Bachchan. And uh, his best film, I think, the films the were... 70s. Yes, in the in the 70s. So I, I especially like that decade. And uh, from all Bachchan films, I like uh, uh, most uh, Amar Akbar Anthony. Let me add here that his son is called Anthony, yes. but that was much... He 
That has nothing to do with the film. <laughs> no, so that, maybe no, no, that has nothing to do uh, uh, with, the, with the film. So there is also this love for uh, Lata Mangeshkar but, songs. Yeah, but maybe uh, let me return to this film uh, issue. So um, uh, I, I watched around 400 Indian movies. That is the record. Yeah. Uh, so, but and especially from 1970s, but not, not, not only and uh, also many, many new films. I can tell you that uh, uh, some of uh, productions have some um, connections to Poland. Yes, yes. Uh, there yes. is this uh, Yash uh, Chopra production, mm -hmm. which we usually associate with Switzerland. But there is one film that was filmed in Poland. Fana. Fana. Yes. So Fana was shot in the south of Poland. Yes, in the, in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And another uh, yes. <clears throat> so, uh, in uh, last last week, there uh, was a launching of uh, a new Salman Khan film, uh, Bharat. And uh, in the, in this film, Bharat, uh, the, the director of photography uh, is uh, from Poland. His name is Marcin Waskawicz, and uh, one of the camera operators is also from Poland, Karol Stadnik. Bharat and Poland connect yes. <laughs> yes. at all levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, because of the great management work done by my uh, compatriot and uh, very good friend, uh, Yulia Pikeuko, uh, who lives in Mumbai. She uh, managed, connects. yes, connects all, the, all of this. Yes, so I was also asking you, if films are there, then the songs are also there. And you are very fond of Lata Mangeshkar's uh, voice and her songs. Mm -hmm. Do you listen to them? What else do you listen to? Uh, you know, I don't want to advertise any uh, specific uh, company, uh, <laughs> but one of the companies in, in India produced a very nice device to listen to old Hindi songs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, uh, I bought it uh, and. Uh, me and my uh, children, they, we are listening to this every day. Every so this day. company knows the company you're talking about. Yeah. They are aware of it. It's no big secret. That's wonderful. Yeah. And also, you know, it provides uh, very various kinds of, uh, of music. Uh, so, uh, Lata Mangeshkar, but also um, some other like uh, Kavali, uh, instrumental music. Um, you know, I like Lata, but uh, one year ago I discovered uh, also um, one very good singer from Karnataka, uh, Dr. Raj Kumar. Oh. He's really fantastic. He sings in Canada, uh, which I don't understand. But, uh, <laughs> yes, but music yes, music is absolutely fantastic. Uh, if I can uh, name my favorite uh, songs. Uh, it could be um, the one from uh, Mukaddar Kasikandar. Which one? Yes. <clears throat> Zindagi to Bafahe, Egdin to Karaegi, Motomek Buba Satlejaegi. Wonderful philosophy. Or um, maybe some other Tereham Safar Githetere. Yeah, this is also. Very, very nice, very nice song. I like this, you know, this decade of uh, 1970s. From more, the music and the films. yes, from more, from more modern uh, music. I like uh, the uh, the song uh, from Om Shanti Om, the title song. All yes. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like this uh, Tamil uh, hit Kolaveri D. Yes. <laughs> This is also so this also is the fun song also. Yes, yes, yes. not uh, just the philosophy, but mm -hmm. the dance movements. And yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Ambassador. But I, I can yeah. I can tell you that uh, we also have some uh, connections, uh, musical connections uh, between uh, Poland and uh, and India. Yes, yes. And, uh, there is one Polish uh, singer, Michał Rudasz, uh, who last year uh, he participated in talent contest in the Star Plus TV in Mumbai. And uh, yes, he he sang a song with Asha Bosle. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, and uh, he was uh, here in India, uh, I think last month or two months ago. And, uh, so, and uh, there are some also uh, musical projects uh, between um, Poland and India. Um, in my uh, 
previous life as a, a director in Polish radio. I uh, co-organized a concert of Zakir Hussein in, in Krakow in Poland. So uh, I would also like to share with the audience here that one could go and watch the documentary A Little Poland in India that talks about uh, Jam Sahib's uh, you know, yeah. outreach to these. I would, so I would strongly yes. advise you to, to watch this, uh, this uh, Little movie, Poland, Little, Poland. Little Poland in India, and also That's second sec yes, so second film by uh, the same uh, person, uh, Jindobri India. Uh, this uh, person is Anurada. Uh, and uh, also a, a very good uh, friend of ours. Um, and uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, film uh, was recently uh, put in um, yeah. Jalan, Jalan Vala uh, Museum in uh, Redford in Delhi. In Delhi. In Delhi, yes, because they opened the, um, uh, the Jalan Vala uh, commemorative memorial. So finally, Mr. Ambassador, with your love for Indian art, literature, cinema, and culture, what would you do to facilitate education and research between the two countries? Uh, so, um, the number of uh, Indian students uh, in Poland is not growing, it is booming. When I started my uh, story with India, um, there were uh, few Indian students, and, but now there are more than 4,000. Uh, that is, um, it became possible because uh, our universities opened, uh, opened the uh, English language course and the Indian students are coming to that course. Polish language uh, is uh, very nice, fantastic. I My believe it's language. one of the most difficult languages. Yes, but it's one, one of the most difficult languages in, in, in the world. But uh, I know uh, many Indians who speak uh, fluent Polish. Uh, I can name uh, Kartike Johri, who is an uh, honorary consul of India in Wrocław. Uh, he speaks very good um, Polish. Uh, also, uh, Another uh, gentleman, uh, Sunil Ahuja from Gdańsk, he also speaks uh, fluent Polish. Uh, JJ Singh from also as well. Uh, so... Um, All the students mm -hmm. also who would be going there would yes, make the language. Yes, and the students, uh, some of the students already are making uh, some uh, careers. There, um, there is one student uh, who uh, graduated the Delhi University and now is in Lublin and very, very active there. Um, so this is one thing, the students exchange, and second is the academic uh, exchange. Um, in my uh, previous uh, career as an ac academician, I cooperated with Jawaharlal Nehru University uh, in, uh, in Delhi. And JNU actually uh, cooperates very closely with the University of Warsaw especially. Um, also University of uh, Kolkata is very active, and the University of Manipal. This, this, uh, this uh, three uh, from Indian sites are the most active to cooperate with Poland and uh, from Poland this University of uh, Warsaw and Jagiellonian University of, of Krakow, yes. Um, but also some other universities also cooperate um, as, as well and this is, um, this is really something that is uh, growing. I, I see that uh, new projects, uh, some common ideas, conferences, international cooperation. This is really something very positive and uh, helps us uh, to understand us each other better. So I think now we, are, we can take a few questions from mm -hmm. the audience, it's open to the house. Anyone would like to make an observation or a query? Uh, I have no idea if you do know that uh, the grandchildren, two grandchildren of Jam Sahib live in Jaipur. They are good friends of mine. And it's very uncanny that for the last couple of days I've been discussing this story of Bapu and uh, the story of the orphans uh, being rescued and given refuge. She, then one of them told me, this is the story if I, you, do, you know or I do not know, but uh, he told me that there was one lady who his mother 
made uh, this chap's mother made uh, chiffon sari to be embroidered for the maharani uh, for the uh, queen here maharani gayatri devi and he wrote back this uh, message to me and he told me that my mother used to get these sarees mm -hmm. uh, for uh, rajmata sahab so this is one thing if you didn't know mm -hmm. for all your royal stories this would add to this this is another connection mm -hmm. from uh, polish embroideries coming to the royalty here and second thing that i want to add, add i have not been to poland but my first encounter with polish people was on a train from uh, austria to germany east germany crossing and it was a very cold night and I slept, but I was freezing in that uh, coat, uh, in that uh, bogey, and suddenly I felt there was a warm thing put on me. I opened my eyes, and there was this Polish lady. We did not know any language. She put the blanket on me, and that's Poland that I remember. I wanted to share that with you. <laughs> Good evening. Um, it's just an anecdote that I wanted to share since we're talking about Poland. I think it's very important to also remember Madame Curie. Yes. She was from Poland and as you mentioned, she fought very difficult circumstances. And uh, she grew up when uh, Poland was occupied. Yeah. And her life and her contribution has been an inspiration to people the world over. And also in much recent politics, um, Many people don't know, Poland is, is in fact the only country where twin brothers were heads of state, the Kaczynski oh, brothers. Yes. One was the prime minister, yes. the other was the president. And then one of them tragically passed away in a air crash, I believe, with other people. So Poland's been at the center of world history for the longest time, and we are glad you're here in our city to share your, let's say, to share your work with us. Thank you. So, uh, uh, one comment about uh, uh, Maria Skłodowska Curie. This is uh, her name is Skłodowska, and Curie was a uh, name of uh, yes of uh, of a husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, maybe because of this uh, uh, surname Skłodowska is uh, rather hard to pronounce in other it's languages. Difficult yes, yes, difficult uh, to yeah. pronounce. But she always uh, was very proud of. Um, of being Polish, uh, and uh, and uh, really she could be a role model uh, for uh, women that uh, want to make an uh, academic career. Really, I'm very proud that I'm the compatriot of uh, Maria Kiris Kwiatkowska. Yeah. And the only lady to win the Nobel Prize twice yes. in just a mm -hmm. gap of seven years. And also because of her magnanimous husband also. He refused to take the award if she were not awarded. So that is also very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking about the, um, the Smolensk uh, tra tragedy, uh, I remember that you know, the whole nation of Poland really lived it uh, uh, these, these days. Uh, it was a very moving experience for the whole, whole nation. So you see, at many levels, including films and uh, literature, Manto particularly, it resonates with the mm -hmm. political history that you have seen and you have experienced. Yes, uh, you know, the, uh, we cannot escape from history, from politics. Uh, I mean, from, from current politics, I, uh, to some extent, we can, but uh, from... <laughs> yeah. But uh, from history, it's, uh, it's, yeah, we, we, can, we cannot escape, I, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Stefan Stefan Norblin. Yes, uh, he was also a refugee, uh, war refugee, um, and uh, he uh, painted the palace of the Maharaja of Jodhpur. Yes, and uh, this is a unique uh, artistic form. Uh, which mix the uh, Art Deco style with uh, Indian culture, mythology, and, and history. This is uh, something that everyone should see, at least on internet, which is very hard, uh, will be very easy, as easy to find. Have them visit the yes, but the, yes, but that's a good tip. Yes, mm -hmm. technology helps. Yes. 
uh, Your Excellency, the fact that you are into translations, and that also Urdu, which is certainly not your first language or even your second. How difficult was it to retain the emotions which are generally lost in translations? The story remains, the character remains, the setting remains, mm -hmm. but somewhere the emotions, uh, they get lost like having a perfume bottle opened and it vanishes. Do you think you were able to retain those emotions and uh, how did you work towards achieving that? Every translation uh, is interpretation. Yes. Um, and uh, every translator uh, has uh, problems with, you know, how to put something in the other language. The, the most uh, difficult to translate is uh, poetry, shairi. Mm -hmm. No, I... <laughs> yeah. uh, Manto was so hard, very hard to translate, but um, the poetry I didn't even try. And uh, I don't want to try <laughs> any translation of, uh, of poetry. I, actually, I translated also from other languages, but it was never my primary job. So um, I, I translated some scientific uh, articles or you know, fragments of books as well. But we look forward to the publication of the uh, Manto. I'm, I'm also looking forward. Yes, <laughs> I would like to read it as uh, uh, as well. And uh, I maybe uh, I also was thinking about uh, translating uh, Nirmal Verma. Wow. He's uh, yes, also very very good author. Very good. Uh, but there's this European sensibility also mm -hmm. in him yes. that would uh, resonate with a lot of issues with you. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, we've really enjoyed your talk a lot and uh, the way you've identified Poland with India the culturally and your passion for uh, literature, for films and music. What about Indian cuisine? How much do you enjoy that and what are the things that you enjoy? I had the uh, Rajasthan Italy today. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I uh, I love uh, Indian uh, yeah. cuisine. Yes, biryani is one of my favorite. But uh, these uh, these uh, months I'm exploring uh, thalis from uh, all around India, because uh, in Delhi you can easily find uh, uh, yes. yes restaurants uh, from different different places. Uh, different places, places. Yeah. Yes, and. Uh, Rajasthan Italy is one of the best Thalis. <laughs> there it is. We come back to Rajasthan and its cuisine and its color. So thank you so much. It's been a wonderful evening. Thank you. If I can add something, uh, is uh, that uh, Poland is a very open country, really, and uh, also is economically growing, very interesting place to visit. Uh, especially that uh, this September we open direct flight from yes from Delhi to Warsaw. That's, that's yes, so <laughs> wonderful. That's very good. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as uh, I visited uh, different parts of Rajasthan, I've been uh, to uh, this region where Mar Marwari community is coming from. Oh, Chikavati, oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh, also, I've been to Bikaner, uh, to Udaipur, uh, Jaipur. Um, I would really uh, would like to uh, convince you to visit Poland when this direct direct flight. <laughs> yes, uh, many many touristic uh, possibilities. Um, like uh, I can name uh, Vilicka. This is the biggest salt mine in uh, in, in, in Europe, yeah. uh, and uh, there's uh, you can even have a, a shadi wedding uh, <laughs> down there. <laughs> so just imagine all your the family coming wedding for a wedding, too, <laughs> and the direct flights are meeting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, thank you.
Thank you. I think we would all agree that that was truly an enriching session, a beautiful journey into Polish culture, history, and literature. Thank you so much, Mr. Borokowski, for sharing your insights with us and joining us. To say that we are fortunate and grateful to have you here in Jaipur with us is an understatement to the hilt. Thank you, Dr. Nanda, for the invigorating conversation. Yes. Thank you. There is one thing that really unites Polish people and Indian people. This is deal. Yes. <laughs> I would now like to call upon Mr. Sudhir Kasdiwal to present Mr. Adam Borokowski and Dr. Nanda with a token of our appreciation. Thank you so much. We would like to thank ITC Rajputana for housing these beautiful evenings and Sri Cement, the presenters of Ek Mulakat. On behalf of Jeshri Periwal Foundation, I extend my gratitude to Prabha Khetan Foundation and Mr. Sandeep Bhutoria for always promoting art culture in our pink city of Jaipur. Thank you all so much for being a wonderful audience. Until our next Mulakat, I usually say Alvida, but today I think it's more apt to try and say Do Vidzenia. <laughs> Thank you all. Fir milenge. May I add something here? I want to register my gratitude to Prabha Khetan Foundation and Yeshri Periwal Foundation for giving me this wonderful opportunity to interact and learn with you, Ambassador Thank you. Thank you, Ms. And Professor. And what Bashir Badr, Bashir Badr has affirmed, Musafir hai hum bhi, Musafir ho tum bhi. किसी मोड़ पे फिर मुलाकात होगी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद